course, on the other side of that, stories like Dracula or the legend of the Chupacabra are with us in, in, in different parts of the world and they explain how we think about the natural kingdom as well. Here's how I think of this show. The natural history has inspired culture, storytelling, and artistic inspiration. That, in turn, has affected how we think of the natural kingdom. If we get scared, then we are automatically scared of the... If we get scared by Dracula, for example, then we might automatically get scared about vampire bats. What this show would like to do is be able to empower you with the knowledge to be able to live, perhaps not in harmony, and perhaps you might not like bloodsuckers, but hopefully you will be able to live side by side with them, empowered by the knowledge that we hopefully can provide throughout this show. Nine sections to this exhibit, and this is section number one. We call it the introduction section, of course. So what we need to do before we get going is set the stage for uh, why there are so many blood feeders in the world, what is in blood, what is not in blood, because I at least believe, or I like to go and see shows where I'm completely in, immersed in something. Where sounds are coming at me, where colors are coming at me, where I can touch and feel different things. And that's what we're hoping that this exhibit will do. So we're in the second, at the second stop here. And there are two different things that I, that I would like to draw your attention to. The first is the video behind you, which speaks to the evolution of blood feeding. And it turns out that blood feeding has evolved on dozens of occasions, perhaps as many as a hundred different occasions throughout evolutionary time. And that connected with the fact that blood feeding creatures need to be able to find blood, they need to be able to get to the blood, they need to be able to keep the blood flowing whilst they're feeding and whilst they're digesting the blood, they need to make sure that the host does not uh, notice them, and then they need to be able to get away unnoticed. All of that is a very, very intricate system. In fact, I can think of very few other systems in biology that are as intricate, that are as highly evolved as those that feed on blood. Imagine that having independently evolved hundreds of times throughout evolutionary history. It is mind-boggling to think that animals that are, so birds or fish or insects or leeches have independently evolved blood feeding as a habit. But a lot of people won't know about the blood feeding birds, the blood feeding snails, the blood feeding roundworms, the flatworms that feed on blood, how frog flies find their prey, for example. So we wanted to create this diversity wall to give some examples that people might not know about, about the diversity of blood suckers in the world. And I'll highlight two different things for you I think are, are very, very interesting. This is an ox pecker, a blood feeding bird. It lives in sub-Saharan Africa. And the idea behind the evolution of blood feeding for this organism is that it started by picking ticks off its mammal hosts. And then when the ticks became scarce, the birds still kept picking at the skin. And they developed a flavor for the blood that was coming out after they picked. And blood feeding evolved through that process. So these birds now feed on all kinds of bodily fluids of mammal hosts in Africa, including blood. But they also, their primary source of nutrition is still ticks, but they do feed on blood. They pick holes with their beaks and then they lick. They have mechanical anticoagulation. They lick the wound so that it won't close up. The second thing that I wanted to highlight are these leeches. Some of you may have heard about the story of the Russian leeches getting confiscated in customs. About 5,000 of them came uh, from Russia to Toronto. Uh, we were tasked with keeping a lot of them as evidence. <laughs> 